always want to see you more, but you're so rare. You make yourself so rare. What are you? I'm so important. Yeah. You're so rare. What are you doing that you have to be so rare? You know, you I, never come out with like like all well, those comics go out. You never do. You know what's funny is we're not with me. Two things. I come by this freaking street when I used to live up here for 15 years, so I know this street back and forth, and uh, so I didn't know you lived here. Um, other than that, that's a great story. We use that as a clip. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, and, that's uh, what I mean. But... And when I saw you in Hawaii, uh, people don't know, pe to the people at home, uh, you do a show in Hawaii and then... You... No, I caught, last year, this was the last year, the last I one, pulled right? the plug. You did the first year of, of uh, comics on board. It was so great. You and Jeff Ross. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 2014, I think. Is that what it was? Oh, yeah, it was Can fucking you believe... fun. It was really fun because you know your 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 friend group of um, yeah is the coolest guy. Oh. Woody's funny, oh. great. Sean Penn, Sean Penn, uh, Eddie, Eddie Vedder. Yep, oh my that gosh. trip and the crew I take. I mean, it was twelve years I did. It was great, and I got to spend time with people like you and Jeff. Yeah. Like I never would mm -hmm. because I don't up. know. What are you doing? Why are you hide? Why are you shy? Why are you? With, <laughs> you're, so, you know what it is. You're with girls, I'm right? I'm so coquettish. How did you get to be? You're, the, you're like the Pete Davidson yeah. of your generation, <laughs> right? I'm you kind yeah. of are. Yeah. Like the guy, everybody goes, "Wow, how did he get all those girls?" It's and always like, how. It's so horrible. <laughs> it always starts with how. No one can figure out the fucking no, Rubik's cube. It doesn't always start with how. Sometimes it starts with what. <laughs> <laughs> was, I remember uh, one of them uh, said I had a big wang in some interview, and people were like, oh, and I go, you know, she's just saying this because people like are baffled, so she has to make up something like, oh, but what is it? It's big, but, and they're like, mm, but, but, but uh, stand outside yourself, yeah. And what would you say it is? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, if you have to actually answer that, okay, push in. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a long speech. <laughs> the thing about me that's Push great. In. <laughs> <laughs> Push in. <laughs> so I, uh, well, you know, <laughs> if you can't get them on the uh, great looks department, which drives me crazy because I would rather be better looking if I could. But <laughs> I think if not, you know, we're all comics. I don't think it would help any of us to be like stunning. Uh, I'm not including you in that. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, we have a sense of humor. But I will say, when people say they like a sense of humor, it's kind of like music. It's a little general. So right. you have to find a girl that exactly. likes your sense of humor. Because right. there's so many different types of comics. Right. Yep. And they can say, I love comedy. And they can list three comics you don't right. think are funny. Right. Go, exactly. Oh. So, or these movies, you go, eh. So, or you say, great. That's exactly. So I, I like girls that are uh, obviously uh, attractive to me, but I also like when they're, kind of light and funny, and they don't have to be hilarious, but they just have like a charm or lightness They have to above. find you hilarious. And they have to find me hilarious. <laughs> that, yeah. You don't care if they're hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it is wonderful to be with a girl who actually does make you laugh. Yeah. That, I mean, it's I certainly really have experienced nice, yes. that. And, it's, and again, it's like, <laughs> how do I put this? Not as much as we do it. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a certain perfect amount. Sure. And it works for them too because they're not comics. Right. Not the, and we're not always on either. No. Just they have a lightness to them or they kind of see the world like you do. It's just a and fun And they get report. the joke. Yeah. They get the jokes. That's it. Some people don't get the jokes mm -hmm. and they have to leave immediately. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I met a girl that was from Ukraine, and I go, well, there's a toddle in town. <laughs> it's like someone's old joke. I go, Ukraine, uh, okay, and she was, they have a seriousness built in and uh, from uh, that area, and uh, everything got quiet. But, uh, you know, Ukraine. <laughs> well, it's just, but, but people like that, and then I'm she's talking to me, and I realized that the point was everything I say or even throw away joke, or even just mildly, it's, it does. It's not clicking, and then that's that. Ultimately, will be the demise. Is not partly because of the language problem? It is partially that, and it's not their because fault, really. It is not their fault, but uh, and just the way you can't blame anybody, I think, for what their taste is. Sure. Um, you also can't blame somebody if they say, "Look, I can't be with someone who speaks English as a second language." 
unless they're utterly brilliant. And I certainly have had that girl in my life mm -hmm. who did not speak English as the first language and was so utterly brilliant. She was better at the language than I am and never missed one reference, one oh, joke. Oh, wow. But it's rare mm -hmm. because the language is a barrier and yeah. we use so many idioms mm -hmm. and we use so You're many- Twisting things and just And phrasing. also references to yeah. growing up here. Yeah. And plus we're working with an age barrier because you and I both, Dave. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we, <We're, laughs> yes you thanks see. for dragging me in, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's true. I know. I'm not. Well, we're like chicken. Well, there's no reason why <laughs> but it's we okay. should apologize for being who we are and what we like. Right. And I think people don't like if there's an age difference with someone you date, and that's it's such it's such hypocrisy. It's fine when Madonna does it. Or she's, she, she's 77, her boyfriend's 14. Everyone's like, that's fine. <laughs> I'm like, that's fine. But, but it's true. It is it's, fine. It's girl power. It's, what, it's whatever works I don't for what. Shit. Yeah, when people, like, a, after 18, you're like, you're an adult, you're an, you guys date, I don't care. I don't, it's not, yeah. I have bigger problems. I got bigger fish to fry. Than you know what uh, an appropriate age is? Mm. One that works. Mm -hmm. If it works and everybody's happy, that's sure. appropriate. That's what's appropriate. One of my friends is female, single, and she's uh, 57. She says, you know, I'll never date a guy under 40, and I'll never... I go, you can't do that because you might meet the coolest guy in the world yeah. who might be 39. Or, you just don't know because it's hard enough if you've got the whole thing. You've got to, you've got to pick up everybody. It's hard enough look, to get just one thing working. Look, first of all, in my experience, relationships work when people um, are more opposite than alike in the sense that <clears throat> you bring to the relationship something the other person lacks. Mm -hmm. So are you, gonna pro <clears throat> are you gonna be like most compatible with someone who's just like you? Not in my experience. I don't want someone just like me. I have me. Yes, and there's some women, <laughs> there's women that are like, I don't need the greatest looking guy in the world because I'm already, Oh, I, I want to be the attractive one, or I'm pretty, and I don't want someone working out every day and preening and doing all that. And they, I think that's one way. Another way women are more interesting is that they can just say, I like a vibe or a packet or something. And that's where it might work for me, where they say, this just the sum of the parts might work. But did, you, did you ever get close to getting married? Mm, yeah. I, I, my problem is I don't know if I would... Uh, if it would work and I would, uh, I'm, you know, obviously I have mental problems. I'd be scared of, uh, if I was living together, if I would not do well with it or if I was, uh, or if I ruined it or if it fell apart for whatever reason, that if we hated each other. I see my friends or people I know that where they get divorced and they hate each other and I go, that's tough. Someone you're that into and it's just a grinding hate and you go, I would hate to have them hate me or I'd hate right. that. It's just a, it's almost just a fear. Obviously, it's not normal, um, but I don't really care. I just think it's perfectly normal for you. There's yeah, no for normal. me, and that means I, it's okay. I, I don't. I don't get. I, I refuse to apologize for any of this. Yeah, you're. I good feel about sheepish that. about that. That I think everybody else is nuts. I don't know how they do it. And by the way, most of them don't. I mean, they either, half of them get divorced, mm -hmm. and certainly of the marriages that do stay together. Many of them are not what I would call happy. Right. Whenever some of them are like it. very like on the surface unhappy, and some of them are just like we have come to accept this sort of dismal experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, you hear when anyone's ever cheating or caught, they go, yeah, if they get in front of it. We've been separate lives for a long time. We, right. We're exactly. basically divorced. It just yeah. it's not really that big of a deal, and that's a tough one because some just the it should be harder legally to get. Um, married than it is to get divorced because marriage is so easy. It should be very tough because when you get divorced, my people I know go, well, I've got the house with them. I've got this and we got the cars mm -hmm. and we got to split up the electric. It's just too hard. And they say, we can just be, we'll be fine. We'll live separate lives. We all know yeah. being stars here in Hollywood <laughs> and A-listers at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I didn't see you at the Met Gala. No, because I didn't go. But um, I didn't have a cat costume. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's 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 a funny look when you see everyone there. 
but we all know people like prominent people, well-to-do like managers and agents and people yeah. like that, as well as stars, yeah. who've gotten divorced. And we know, being close to these people, that they went through a kind a period of years. If they were lucky, it was only two years, but it could be five years of just this every day hatred yeah. and um, revenge. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just imagine you're paying for the lawyer who's fucking yeah. you in the ass. Yeah. That yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And also, this is the person you thought it was going to be forever with. Yeah. And so you opened up totally to them. So now they have the best kind of ammunition to use on you. Because they know everything about you. They, That's scary, like, too. So I think this is what we both has prevented both of us from like going all the way to Baghdad, as I call it, with, mm -hmm. you know, That's like, nice. let me just <laughs> invade Kuwait and <laughs> kick him out of uh, what we said and not go all the way to Baghdad. Because when you go all the way to Baghdad, you get bogged down. And then the next thing you know, the Shiites are coming into your apartment and putting an electric drill to your brain. Yeah. I mean, metaphor. This happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it happened in Iraq. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to sound like I'm anti anything about this. I oh, love the girls. I, you know, I just, I, I have, uh, I've had great relationships and I just, oh, you geez. know, fears of ruining them. Just let me get this out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> you can't take anything out. Okay, I see. No, but uh, you know, I would, I, I, I'm, it's funny you said agents. I was seeing someone. I'm, just a few years back and, and left me for a big agent. And I was like, oh, I just walked out in the middle and just said, yeah, I got this big agent guy. And I was like, oof, it's a rough were you, were you very upset by it? Then? I was, yeah. You were? Yeah. So you really wanted that one to work? I was working on it, trying to make it work out. And uh, I was didn't even get a chance. It was like ripcord pulled for me. But you know, I have, <laughs> I have, I have, I have uh, women I've dated in the past and, uh, it takes a long time for me to actually get to know someone, and then you sort of find out what they're like when they're mad, when they're sad, when they're when they're this, when that things are going well. And over time, you can find out I can handle that because they go, "Oh, everyone's crazy. I'm crazy. We know that." So when I say, "What crazy other person?" We're both crazy. Which one can I? That type of crazy I can deal with the most. And it's like, "Oh, that one I, I'm not that worried about." I'm not I okay. don't find you crazy. I, I, I cloak it all right, but I'm not that bad we, for being a comic. You, we, you're not crazy. Why you do that? It's like supermodels who go, yeah, I was a nerd. And I was like, Shut the fuck up. That's our you're not crazy. They're not nerds. <laughs> Everybody stop with the false modesty. Uh, you're not crazy. Everybody else is crazy. Uh, yeah, when they say that to me now, I, go, I was a nerd. I go, you're still a fucking nerd to me. Well, Take that out. You're a nerd who probably did 28 movies. Mm. Well, I'm I'm okay with everything. So, um, what was I going to tell you? How I many remember, movies have you done? You think? I don't know. 34. Do you count? No. Do people 34. count? Um, <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, and uh, 81 cameos, <laughs> Sandler movies. Uh, no, I've done. Um. um I don't know. I've done TV shows. I try to keep it moving. I did a tour this year, stand-up tour. Do you ever go on tour tour, or do you just... You, I, you can't, I should. Really. I, I have to call it... I have to, like, rename just when I go out. I'm going to call it a tour. Because what's a tour? It's like, I'm in this city this day and this city yeah. then. And it's it helpful to sell it. It was stupid that I haven't. But I'm going to uh, rename my... But not rename, name. Because now, I, they, right, I just say... You need a name show, for I'm, it. I'm yeah. in, you know, I'm in... Fuck, oh, here are my plugs right now. June 3rd, I'm at the Met in Philadelphia. June 4th, the Wind Creek Event Center, Bethlehem. June 16th and 17th. Dump. At, <laughs> at the MGM Grand in Vegas. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, what? Oh, I just in Vegas. I'm doing a thing in Vegas with Nikki Glaser. We do, uh, oh. We're doing three more this year. We just did it last weekend. Here's how you know you're not crazy. Everybody, you're like Woody Harrelson. Everybody who ever has worked with you likes you. That's nice. Yeah. People, like, look, I mean, you're, you're a huge podcast. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like nice. some people don't. Wouldn't come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some people just, I'm not going to name names, mm -hmm. but certainly even in the cast of SNL of that era are not like, you know, because no. they are crazy. 
Yeah. There are some people who are crazy. I'm not going to. Not all BFFs, for sure. I mean, that is a, uh, it's a war zone. And they always say, don't compare it to the war because it's not. I'm like, well, we all know it's not the actual war. <laughs> but, you know, you go down there, you're basically down there with people and it's a tough place. I like that you're such a pro stoner. You have scissors. Not just scissors. These are, my friend Dave gave me these to me. These are like, uh, I call them circumcisors because it really, it gets right to the point. Well, let's see if it really, um, <laughs> you know, when Woody, uh, your boy Woody did SNL, I think he tweaked up his monologue. I thought that was interesting. I've never seen that happen. Tweaked up? Like he changed it. I uh, worked on that with him. But I don't know if he bit. changed it. You'd be the one asked. I don't know if he changed it. I just know that that's not really the, you know, what they do there. Absolutely, it's not. And I thought Woody was just cool because such for a comedy, blow. do both sides. First, Let the host say whatever he wants. That's interesting. Okay. You know he and I are very close. Yeah. And I'm not just saying it for that reason, but what, first of all, what an amazingly great guy yes. and what a ballsy move because, yes. first of all... It might get Saturday, you adrenaline going, I bet. Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the plot of certain movies, shows. It's live. They can't stop me. I'm going to do this. Uh, and this guy did it in real life. It was yeah. like, no, they can't because it is live. Yeah. And I'm going to tell this story. Now, I don't know how much they knew about what the ending of that story was, but it was also a brilliant way to make that point. And look, Woody and I have had just too many hours of discussions about vaccines yeah. and COVID and stuff. I would say we're 90% on the same page, mm -hmm. but I certainly don't go as far as he does. Sure. But... The theme that he was putting out there, I certainly am on that page of we should be much more skeptical of pharmaceutical companies. It's so funny when the Sackler family puts out these opioids, you know, that's, yeah. that's what is it, Oxy, OxyContin, and they get sued and the, for $8 billion they have to pay. And everybody goes, oh, well, the Sackler family, sure, pharmaceutical companies, billionaires, of course, corporate America, they can't be trusted. But when the same people are involved with, as Woody said, you know, okay, you're going to have to stay home until you take our drug. Yeah, that's not to say that COVID wasn't a real thing sure. or that the vaccine wasn't helpful to millions of people who would have died without it. But it is a point that should be made. And the fact that he was able to or willing to put his considerable popularity because you know he's a beloved yes. figure and say i'm gonna i'm gonna take the hit of some political capital by making this statement sure. in this very high profile arena mm -hmm. i mean you got to give the guy props for that even if you don't agree with it right i would i wouldn't do it uh i i, I have no <laughs> exactly. opinions i don't even have an opinion about this <laughs> <laughs> oh my no, God. I love that when, it, when he did it because yes. I watched it and I was like, and when it feels like it's off cards, like cue cards where you think, and I've been there, you know, I work there and the monologue is like, uh, you know, sometimes it's written early enough to be in read through on Wednesday and sometimes they throw it together on a Saturday. My right. monologue got derailed when I went back to is host, right? Sandler was in it. And it was the weekend Waterboy opened. We're going back a ways, but Waterboy was such a big hit. He had to go back right. to LA to do something because it was that weekend. It was blowing up. We were like, holy shit. This is one of our guys, you know? Right. And it was so big. And he goes, I got bad. I got to go. And I'm like, oh, he's in my monologue. And I'm already in 13 sketches going, what's my monologue? Wow. And they go, well, Lauren goes, just, you know, do something from your act. You're a comedian. I'm like, I don't never go on anymore. I'm just, I'm on just shoot me or whatever. Really? So I go, fuck. Um, I pulled something from my my last special and then something new I was working on. I go, but there's no practice. It's like I do it once at for six people, the crew guys, and then I do it on dress and then air. And so I did it and it was it was it was fun, but the monologue is scary anyway. Woody's not a stand-up. I thought he was very ballsy to say that. And I I think Lorne maybe knew he would do something like that. That's what I had heard. And I like that Lauren said not it's your funeral, but just you do it. If you if that's what you think, you'll take the heat. Sinead O'Connor ripped right, thing up. Right. Tim Robbins, when I was on, came out and he wanted to slam GE. And that's our parent company. Right. And he said, GE, it brings good things to death. <gasps> Why? And he just what did, did it in his monologue. Do? He was they were doing something back then, of course. I don't know anything about politics. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> I was too busy on. putting my nails on for gap girls. So, so <laughs> 
<laughs> so I couldn't give a shit. But I was like, wow. And and he did it, and Lauren was like, eh, like let him, you know, let him do it because it's part of the fun of the show. And then later, Sinedo kind of ripped up the picture and, of the Pope, and then they forgot about the Tim. It was Robinson. the same show. Yeah. Boy, these stories about SNL are great. We should do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, wow, I'd never. Hmm. But anyway, what do you, to, to wrap that up, I thought, I thought a very interesting choice that he would do that because now you got to go to all your sketches when even the cast is probably like, holy shit, dude. Right. That's and it's what I'm scary saying. enough to do that show. It's scary no, enough. Right. If you were to start a new business, what would it be? And don't say a chat GPT robot brothel. I'm sure that's already a thing. Whether you're starting a new business or a growing one, if you want it to be successful, you need the most talented people on your team. That's where ZipRecruiter comes in. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash random. Why should you let ZipRecruiter help you hire for your business? I'll tell you, ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology finds highly qualified candidates for a whole wide range of roles. ZipRecruiter lets you send candidates you like a personal invite, so they're more likely to apply. ZipRecruiter also offers attention-grabbing labels that speak to job flexibility to really help your job stand out. Let ZipRecruiter fill all your roles with the right candidates. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash random. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash random. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. The weather is getting warmer and you know what that means. It's almost hot girl summer. But in order to be your hottest, you have to get sleep. And that's where Bowl and Branch comes in. Bowl and Branch is the bedding expert, making the highest quality sheets with incredible craftsmanship. They sent me these sheets and I have to say, they have amazing traction. I kid. But truly, you can feel the quality immediately. The sheets are silky smooth and help you sleep like a baby, minus the screaming bloody murder while shitting your pants. The signature hemmed sheets from Bowl & Branch are a bestseller for a reason. Bowl & Branch uses the highest quality 100% organic cotton threads on earth. Each sheet set is slow made for a superior softness and a better night's sleep. They're so luxurious, they're loved by four US presidents. Rumor has it that Joe Biden was recently seen trying to eat his. Best of all, Bowl & Branch gives you a 30-night risk-free guarantee with free shipping and returns on all U.S. orders. Sleep better at night with Bowl & Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code CLUB at BowlandBranch.com. That's Bowl & Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. Promo code CLUB. Exclusions apply. See site for details. You've never seen Watergate like this. White House Plumbers is a new HBO original limited series from the producers of Veep and Succession that stars my friend Woody Harrelson, also Justin Thoreau, Lena Headley, and more. It's based on the unbelievable events behind the Watergate scandal. No names have been changed to protect the innocent because nearly everyone was found guilty. Stream White House Plumbers on HBO Max and check out HBO's White House Plumbers podcast hosted by Olivia Nunzi wherever you get your podcasts. It takes enormous balls yeah. and integrity to stand up for what you believe when you know that the opprobrium is going to come at you forcefully. And of course, it did the next day. I saw the stories on the internet. It was right. I mean, it hadn't been. Ten, it's funny because I said to him before he did it, this might be a little too subtle for the crowd because it's it's a metaphor. It was cloaked in it, yeah. Are they, are, you cloaked it in this idea. Are they really going to get it? And of course they got it in two <laughs> seconds and the haters were all over but it. But I didn't know where it was going. I was like, right. oh, this is but weird. And then I it's go, so oh, funny. Like, okay. This is an example to me of real courage. Whereas there's so much stuff that people do now, like in, in situations just like that, where it's called courage, but it's not courage, because here's the difference between courage. Courage is when you say something knowing you're gonna get booed yeah. or hated. It's not courageous to go, I'm gay, in yeah. front of a very liberal audience that's going to give you a standing ovation. Yeah. It's not wrong, but it's like, that's not courage, because they're loving it. Well, you know, comics did Trump jokes mostly during the 
first election that Trump was like kind of a crazy person. And then when they kept doing them, I'm like, all right, you can switch it now because now it's, you go, you hear what Trump said and then everyone applauds. So it's, as right. a comic, you go, that's fine, right. whatever your politics are, but let's find a new angle that is, yes. it's ballsier to say anything against that to make people go, oh shit, you're not saying what everyone's saying. I saw this guy, he's an actor, I love him. He's, I think he's a, a fantastic leading man actor. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> Oscar Isaac. No, Oscar Isaac, yeah. Not Isaac, Oscar, right. Isaac, Oscar Isaac. Oscar I, I, okay. I think. It's so funny because his name is Oscar Isaac. I th always thought he was Jewish. He, could, he could be. He looks some ethnically something. You know, he doesn't look like he came over on the Mayflower. Because you know? when he went to confession, he brought his lawyer. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I think uh, you know Mr. Cohen. Wow. An old Bill Maher bit, guys. Boy, the oldest. That's a great one. Yeah. The one was... I used to see at the improv. Oh. Scott we all great. know our, like, original acts. I love it. Because him. those are the ones we saw each other do every yeah. night. Yeah. I saw you on the chalkboard. I was new, and right. I'd see... Bill Maher, Jay Leno, Seinfeld, Belzer, Paul Reiser. I'm like, it's a fucking Mount. It was great. I go, oh. everyone's good. That was that was a good training. Neilan, Dennis Miller. I great. remember hanging out at the Improv out here, and uh, Sandler was like just an up and coming. <laughs> were you? Were you? I don't think you were around, but I remember him at the Improv, and like we would like go out to my car and listen to Beatles songs. <laughs> Great. You, know, you think about he's such a music dude yeah how far but i'm gonna finish my go ahead oscar isaac. isaac okay so he he's the host this is like a year ago or something host of snl yes yeah okay okay so <clears throat> he uh comes out and in his monologue he reveals that his his name is not oscar isaac that's like those are the first two names he has but his name is oscar isaac like I don't know, and then it's two Hispanic names. He's Hispanic. Oh, I didn't know. That. Exactly. Well, you didn't watch this episode, no. I guess. Mm -mm. You know, it's still on now that you're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why would they keep it on? <laughs> we peaked. <laughs> so, so he says, my name, my real name is Oscar Isaac, you know, Hernandez Rodriguez or whatever it was, and the audience erupts in applause yeah. and because it's like <laughs> the woke audience you've been cured of whiteness <laughs> it's a miracle we thought you were white and this is it's such a gift from god great news yeah. it's a gift from god <laughs> oscar isaac is not white he's not white and then and, he, and then and again i like this guy i think yeah. he, he's he's actually done great i mean lucky he was hosting that show and i think he's still underused but then he says like yeah, those the, the first two names. Those are the ones they gave me. And like, who who's they? First of all, what's like, they gave him? Like, what do you mean? Meaning like, like the agent, like it's oh. like, like it's 1950, and he's in the office yeah. of Louis B. Mayer. All right, we're gonna call you Oscar yeah. Isaac. All right, young man, yeah. the public won't accept someone of Hispanic origin. We're gonna call you Oscar yeah. Isaac. No, I'm sorry, we have a better one. You're gonna be Bill Jones. Yeah. Bill Jones. No, it's like, like th Marilyn this Monroe. kind of yeah. phony fucking posturing is what. They, I they made me. Uh, they made me. They didn't make you. Mm. Uh, you signed on to that willingly. And uh, by the way, when you came along, it still would have been fine. Yeah, so you, you know, right now it's fine. It's, We're going to give you two first names. It's like, no, the, you know. It was no, I know. 2010, what were they going to, we don't serve your kind. You yeah, know? I know. <laughs> I, uh, he was in, because uh, he did a sketch with Sarah Sherman I saw that was funny. And I said, who is that? And he said, Oscar Isaac. And I they said he was in the Star Wars, but I, I didn't even, well, uh, yeah. listen, it's that, good for I, him I if I don't know who he is because I don't oh, know Oh, I know very on. much who he is. He was, I, I don't see Star Wars, but he did a fantastic uh, HBO, like, limited series about a year ago, scenes, I think it's called Scenes from a Marriage. It might be the, oh, yeah. the Ingmar Bergman thing. It's a little over your head, Dave. No, believe uh, me, don't go by me. If there's <laughs> something good, I'll never see it. Really? You wouldn't watch that? It was him and Jessica Chastain. It was about a marriage. No, oh, because, uh, yeah. Remember <laughs> what, that one with, what, like, what, what you, DiCaprio? Okay, and everything has to be Joe Dirt and, yeah. like, uh, really? No, yeah. I'll watch that stuff, but it's like some of them are just uh, too depressing or really? too Really? So what do you watch? Um, TikTok. TikTok? No, really? No, I have seen are you? Are you on, do you do a lot of the kid no. stuff with the... I, I am on TikTok. You are, but 
it's bombing. Uh, really? No, because no. I don't really do it. I, I would just like plug gigs and everyone's like, whoa, 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 that's not really what we do here. Really? Well, that's not really what you do there. Great. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, it just, if, if I joined it and I got 4 million people right away, so I go, oh, so it's more people that I could get work, stuff out to. But I do like doing a little comedy shit for it. So it's but if you don't uh, use it to plug, what the fuck do you have it for? Bill, that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> well, what if I learn a new dance? <laughs> um, right, that's true. They say I'm the John Bonet of. I feel like being a me being on TikTok now yeah. at 67 yeah. would be like me walking into, you know, the hottest club in LA on, on just a regular Saturday night. Like, hey, I'm going to be here at the club. No, sir. Yeah, you're you're just you're, this club is not for you. Yeah, you know you know you know. One I mean, time I went out with uh, when I just started SNL my first year. No, maybe my first year. Or I just I knew Lovitz and maybe Carvey. I just knew him barely or Dennis. And we went to a Lakers game. And then they go, let's go. And Lovitz was like, let's go to Bar One. Remember Bar One? Of course. I'm sure you fucking killed it there because. <laughs> but I was new. And so I go, oh, what's this? They go, it's a club on Sunset Boulevard. I was like, great. And so I, we all went there and uh, we walked up and a bouncer checks that. He goes, John Lovitz, SNL. And it was like Dana, Dennis, maybe it was them, whatever. And then me. And so we, I, yeah, I was a writer. I just got hired. So we go in, have fun. And then a week later, my buddy's in from Arizona. And he goes, what do you want to do? And I go, oh, there's a bar I went to called Bar One. Let's go there. And so we valet, we get out, and the guy goes, what's the name? Because he stops me, which is, first of all, bothered me. And I, it's a Saturday night, and he goes, uh, what's your name? I go, uh, uh, he goes, you have a reservation? I go, uh, no, uh, isn't it a nightclub? And he, I didn't understand what was going on. And he goes, yeah, we got a private party tonight. That's their company line. I didn't know that. Always. Always. We got private a private party. party tonight. It's like the legal way to say it. Right. And uh, I go, on a Saturday? I couldn't believe someone rented it out. Right. Uh, and then I go, oh, well, uh, I was here last week. Was, uh, who are you here with? I go, oh, this with John Lovett. So, oh, yeah. What do you do? I go, I'm on SNL. He goes, you're a cast member? I go, yeah, I'm a writer. And he goes, yeah, private party. <gasps> Motherfucker. WJ is going to hear about this. So he said, nothing we can do. And my buddy was like, let's go. It's so fucking embarrassing. Got worse. Turned around and the valet was driving with my car, and I go, eh. and then I had to wait for him to park it, come back, get the keys, go back, get it, come back, overpay him. And my buddy's like, You're not famous at all. I think some of your stories are lies. I go, Well, I'm like famous, but I'm a writer. <laughs> it's like, well, that doesn't count as anything. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there in America going, uh, <clears throat> You guys are complaining about the time you didn't get recognized. Yeah. Um, but I just have to say, I've had that happen to me too, and it, it is pretty bad. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's like you know, Jesus there's Christ. A, yeah, and that's the thing you learn that um, fame is something <clears throat> that in America, because we're so bifurcated, that everyone has a little niche. Yeah. So like you can never depend on knowing who's going to know you and who's not. So you sure. just have to go through life, unless you're like, you know, Drake or, sure. you know, Obama or something. When you, you know. hear these people say, do you know who I am? They don't. It's <laughs> I mean, if you say it, you're yeah. already at a disadvantage. So famous exactly. in its way it is, it's, in the definition, you know who I am. If you don't, I'm not that right. famous. So no. when P I go to places and they go, hey, there's going to be about a 45 minute wait. I go, right. okay. And then I yeah. either take off or wait, but I don't go, hey. Right, exactly. I think you got it wrong. I go... Some people know, some people care. People care different levels. Yeah. Some people see me and they go, hey, there's, I remember when I found out it wasn't a big deal. It was when someone goes, uh, hey, there's, Dave, there's David Spade. He goes, I hate that guy. And I go, oh. So I thought, oh, it doesn't mean they like you. It just means they know who you are. They saw you on something. Of course. And I'm on fucking TBS every day for right. grown ups or Ben right. Tomer. So <laughs> they're getting force fed me somewhere from some right. cable or yes. they see something or, right. you know. So, it, it, it is uh, fun to be known like that somehow, but um, it doesn't always mean it's like. Well, I have a tip for you. Yeah, go for the. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> what are we in a business meeting? Go, you, Tom. Uh, okay, so if 
this this you said somebody says uh, yeah. we have a forty five minute wait okay. and you and you either go yeah. right or you wait. What I would do, what I have done, <laughs> okay. is um, very nicely say, okay, um, I was invited here. I've, so I'm so sorry. I was out somewhere else and I met. I forget the gentleman's name, but he seemed. Everyone seemed to understand he was the owner of this place, and he asked me to come in. You know, whenever he said he would take care of me. So I don't know who this. I sorry, I can't remember his name, but and they the the person who's starting to get the drift. Well, they get the drift, and also they probably will get some other person. Uh, Even if the owner isn't there, so you have one more chance, and it's pr probably somebody smarter and <laughs> higher up who then goes, "Hey, knucklehead, let him in the cheesecake factory." <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect ending to that. <laughs> <laughs> we have tons the of cheesecake tables. Cheesecake factory. That's awesome. He drove That's all right. the way down to the Grove. Let this fucking guy relax. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. What do you think of that? That's not a bad one. I'm just so embarrassed to go like, it's, I don't think you get But it. are you still going to clubs? I go, no, I go to Cheesecake Factory. I go, maybe you know me from Grown Ups. They go, Chris Rock? No. Adam Sandler? Right. There's only five of us. You'll, you'll hit right. me eventually. <laughs> no, you have to like not. You, it, it's not. No, I don't go anywhere where they would. Uh, a club, not a chance. There's one guy that's still like on an old club list. I laugh about it with my friends that. He still hits me up, you know. Who, I'm like, you need to go to a club. Like he'll be like, "Hey man, if right. you're at the F1 in Monaco, we're doing a thing." That I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and I go, "I hope it's." Do you I, I say, "If the F1 comes here and it ends at 9 p.m., I might go." <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember the times, like the era, I should say, yeah. when you knew what? Every night of the week, yeah, sickening, yeah. Club, like, and it was the same bunch of douchebags, yeah. who would then go me. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Ladue. Yeah. I'd go to Las Palmas. I'd go to right. Concord. I'd right. go to Spider Club. And and like, oh, so gross. I'm like, I should probably give Thursday off. They've seen me too much. I'm right. Like, One day. That's right. It. You're, give them a fucking month. You know why? Because here's the thing. We're probably the same with this. I don't know. I was certainly no cathode in the pussy beaker when I was in high school. <laughs> I was not making any experiments happen. Sure. Okay. So, and then, you know, Cornell, that was horrible. <laughs> Finally, I'm like a grown man, yeah. you know, and girls, I can make girls like me if I get to talk to them sometimes. Sure. Yeah. You know? So, therefore, having like sort of wandered in the wilderness for so long, um, it was like, okay, there are these places now where I can afford to go to yeah. and that I can get in yeah. and I can post up at a bar and see a pretty girl and start to talk to her and make, you know, get her nerve, all that whole yeah. shit. And it was like, if I can do that now, it was a little like Halloween, you know, like this is a night they're giving out candy. I'm tired, but I really... <laughs> It, it ends after tonight. Yeah. Like tomorrow, I can't knock on some stranger's it's door so and have them funny. give me candy. But I can tonight, so I'm yeah. going to keep going. And it was kind of like that, but it took 10 years. <laughs> yeah, and fame is a window. So you go, hey, I might as well. I remember Ashton Kutcher. I just saw him on something. And uh, who I knew him back in the day a little bit because he was on 70s show. I was on Just Shoot Me, and we were, we'd see each other a lot. Super nice guy, but he said, I was a douchebag. He goes, I don't know. I mean, he goes, I had fame. He's first of all, he's tall, great looking. He has no problem anyway. Mm -hmm. And then he's famous and he's rich and he's on a hit show and it's just too much. I mean, it, he said, I pro, he doesn't, there's no proof, but he was just like, I'm sure I was a dick because it's just too much, too much. Now, luckily. He did, I've never seen him be a dick. No, he's always nice. I, he I, is I, always yeah, nice. I just thought it was, it was kind of humbling that I he just said I think he's being very like, hard on himself. Yeah, he's being hard on himself. But I get that when you go in those days, like, it's mostly your friends going, can you get us in here? Even if you don't want to go out, they're like, just get us in and right. you can get the fuck out of there if you want. Just get us in and get us, you know, throw your car down, but then you can take off. So that that is fun when people know you and you go out, but, you, you I, know, you I do much. wish I had stopped living that life earlier than I did, though. Even though it was still available to me, if I, if I was a more mature person, mm -hmm. 
you know, an early mature, which I never have been. Mm -hmm. We can't all have every great attribute. Mm -hmm. I wish I had, certainly 40 should be the year you stop ever being in a club or a bar just for the purpose of like, you know, being a single guy, talking to girls. And it should be something. I don't even know what would replace that, but like, but you know, the problem is for us, like, we never, I mean, I don't regret never getting married. Do you? No, not really. I mean, yeah. I think also going to those places, now I go to dinner and I do a longer dinner and have a drink and then I don't. I used to go to dinner and then maybe have a drink and then go to a club. And then it was, right. I got rid of the club. And then I go to dinner, let's go somewhere else, have a drink. Right. And now it's long dinner, drinks, talk, where you can hear each other. Right. Because I realize your superpowers are gone. When you're at a club and you're yelling your jokes, it's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> no one hears them. And that's oh, my yeah. only thing I got going. No, no one oh. looks across the bar and goes, ooh, this guy. Right. They, they, they're looking. It's just strictly it's, yeah, on it's, the surface. Who's the most attractive person I can talk to? Because no one's talking. They're just yelling and they're going, where are you going after this? I'm like, I just got here. Right. Because no one has anything to say. What are you doing after? I'm like, I mean, but that's the thing. And first of all, some of them are on their phone. They're not even in the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this this incredibly superficial room you're in, yeah. they take it one step beyond that. They're not even in that room. They're not even next to you. They're just like... They're this. like, right. Yeah. So, I mean, look. We didn't have that when we were... Usually when we went out, there wasn't that, at least. No. And I think things were so much better when... People, I mean, I know this sounds like get off my lawn, but like when, when for sure. It, uh, I'm, but but, <laughs> but it, it I doesn't mean way. it's not wrong. No, I don't listen. I don't want AI. Yeah. I, I just think we should just stop. About a year ago, I go, we should just stop inventing things. Now we're good for about ten years. Like everything's going well. We have to keep inventing, keep pouring money in things, and keep. And then you go, but it just gets more and more complicated. More, my house I just moved into has a bunch of stuff it's not even regular light switches it's like meow, meow. <laughs> and i go nothing works everything's shitty um i wish i lived in a dump like this i've sort of missed it you know <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding this is good well i don't live here no you this know is that the club random <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is like this is like in the metaverse and you know what you, I, if I invited you to a party here, you would never come because Shut you're, up, Bill. you're in bed at nine o'clock. I, I say, I remember a while ago, I told uh, our manager, Mark Gerwitz, hey, hey, handsome. I said, <laughs> we have the same manager. Yeah. And I said, I see more and more clips of Bill's show uh-huh. because they, they do come, uh, they come across my phone. I do mean, I came across them. But uh, I see you on there and I go, I watch and I say, oh, this was funny. And then he goes, Tell him. Tell, I go, you tell him. You talk to him every day. He goes, right. you got his number. And I go, all right. So I've texted you about three times, but I don't think I, I have your old Hawaii number. You anymore. must, because I would certainly So I answered. say, hey, Bill, this was great when you said this. Really? Because hey, I see it, and I go, okay. fuck, man, this is stuff Well, that here's I, a rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. If I don't answer your text, it means I never got three it. Three years? Yes. I would, I'm not the bouncer from 1997 who didn't know who you are. I mean, No, I, I think I you'd at least say, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. Oh. So I keep saying... Mark, and maybe, maybe. okay. Well, we'll remedy this tonight. Yeah, we will. And uh, but you just do. You don't ever stay out late, do you? I don't stay out that late anymore. And also, I don't do drugs. I used to do. That's a shame. A little bugger sugar, you know, just to <laughs> just to bump it up a little bit, you know, <laughs> just a little power flower. <laughs> uh, oh. But I, but that, and I realized that would keep you up. But you know, in the last 10, 15 years, it's too tricky. No, so. you. You, we can't do anything exotic at our age. Well, anything. I think I did. There's twice when I did a little extra, um, and I felt like a little jittery, and I you, go, it's a bad feeling. You can't. And uh, I go, I don't want to go down that way. Look, I'd rather not. No. Look, you you have to make concessions to age. Yeah. You know, you look good. You look whatever you are. Yeah. But a good version of that, and that's all you can do. That's all, all I got going for you. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I mean, that's good. I, I agree. Only, Thank you. No, yeah. Because you look healthy. You look like yourself. Yeah. The worst thing yes. you can do is to do some fucking surgical intervention that you don't look like yourself, yeah. as I say in my act. Then you're old and weird. <laughs> <laughs> I might just do the lips. Uh, no, but I see people, and uh, yes. some things are too big, or something. And, and you know what? Nothing says sends the wrong message to a woman like plastic surgery on a man because i asked you before or somehow came up like why do you think this 
you know, you were always so popular with women. They like authentic. Yeah. What is less authentic than a man or, yeah. who like can't stand to like, and, yeah, and I you know, know they, hi. You, you wrestle with it though, because I think we're all insecure. But it doesn't work. Right. That's the thing, if it, if it actually worked, Fran Leibowitz had the great line, no one will ever have it better on that. She said, no one looks at a 65 year old person with plastic surgery and goes, look at that young person. <laughs> <laughs> so if, yeah. so what's the point? Or Be someone, authentic. Yeah, girls that are 27 and they get it. That, I mean, we've made women feel so badly or whatever, but they go, oh, we got to get it. And so normal women out in the real world, they're getting lips and everything. Yeah, and but go, you, know that, no, you look 40 when you're 27 and you go, you know what? Sorry, nobody put a gun to your head. Okay? Yeah. It's you made a dumb fucking choice. That's it. Yeah. Um, I saw this uh, story about... I think it's Linda Evangelista. Do you remember her? Yeah. The supermodel yeah. from like the 90s? Of course. While well, you dated her or something like that? No. Okay, no, but just I. It's like a stunner. There yeah. are peop, a lot of pictures of you with like a, a woman who's a foot and a half taller than you. I think they all start a foot and a half taller. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but really, I mean. It, it, Minimum. Yeah. It only made you look good. No, it's fine. I, I try not to but, push it out there, but yeah. But she, uh, she, she like did some. Thing yeah. that ruined her face. That went sideways on her, yeah, right. unfortunately. And I I feel bad for her, but I have limited sympathy for people who do it to themselves. You know, you did something for vanity. Yeah. And uh, and something that is advertised to be, you know, probably works 100, 99 out of 100 times, but do you really want to be that? Yeah, because it seems to... They seem to have it down pretty well for like, I don't know if the Kardashians have had anything, but if they have, they, they've got it wired because butts are curvy, everything, you know, it all seems to like look good and you go, now, is it a great message for young women? I don't know, but. Well, don't Google um, breast jobs that went bad. Yeah. Because there's. Which I, is the show I, I'm producing. <laughs> 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 for the TLC. Right. But. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. I mean, they... it's hard. I I get it. I mean, I think Linda Evangelista's supermodel was probably in that George Michael video. And, you know, at a certain point, you've just got everything. And then if it starts to slow down, you know, it's the same with all of us. We you all can't just... really do these things on the body. I mean, I certainly understand that there's a real thing that is being trans, being, you know, so called born in the wrong body. But you know, whatever the remedy that we decide for whatever individual, they are not um, putting enough emphasis on the fact that you you can't expect to have somebody to be really healthy for the balance of their life when you do something as radical as take away their penis and put in a vagina or vice versa. These things are intrinsic to your health. You know, it sure. feels like health is number two below this makes me feel and that is important yeah but I'm, you know any surgery is very uh scary to anyone and so the more you do the more it can go the wrong way i i agree with you i agree, you with, had I agree with what you're saying have you ever had surgery um i mean i've had a hernia a hernia voluntary <laughs> um <I> mean, <laughs> why why did you get a hernia? Because I lift weights every second. R no. Because <laughs> I have a solo flex in my house. <laughs> solo flex. I had one in my apartment <laughs> on Westmount. My the when I fr yeah yeah it's with got the like rubber, rubber bands. With the rubber on, bands. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. No, I just got one because uh, old or something, and then um, I had one. I have to get another one for a sinus surgery, but I don't. But I'm just saying those things you get scared because the last second you're in there going. What if this goes wrong? Even a colonoscopy, you go, which uh, I did one recently. Let's look at a clip. <laughs> Do you have the clip? Uh, <laughs> we don't have the clip. I sent one. <laughs> uh, but even those, you, you're about to go under and you're like, some people don't wake up. So you get scared. Now, if you're doing something really, you know, you're really getting in there in your body, that's scarier. I mean, that, that's the whole thing of plastic surgery in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's risky, so. You know, even though it's like the slowest moving Bronco chase ever, 
and it's been foretold and then happened in such slow motion, I still can't believe that we who were the young comedians <laughs> are now the old comedians. I know. You know? Oh God, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know it's gonna happen and yet you can't believe it did. Yeah. You know, we're, what are you talking about? We're... I will say we are lucky because in the comedy world, yes. you don't have to retire that fast. Much better than music. It's great. I see your show. I'm like, Bill looks the same. He's doing the same show. He's getting laughs. You got yeah. interesting. So yeah, well, Elon again, Musk, all these people. It's, it's like it's fun. It's kind of an advantage that we were never the pretty boy. Yeah. Because then we never had that to lose. You know, yeah. it's not like, hey, George Hamilton <laughs> lost his tan or whatever, you know. Girls always say, guys are lucky. They go, uh, when you get older, you just get better looking. Not you, but they, <laughs> and I go, well, if you're a good looking guy and your hair gets a little gray, it's like, great. But not everyone turns into a butterfly when they're 70. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but women are much more deep than us. Sure. Like, <laughs> I agree. No, in, in the sense that there were more superficial, like yeah. the old saying goes, women fall in love through their ears and men fall in love through their eyes. I thought it was boners. <laughs> I heard something different. <laughs> I don't know. It was on a bathroom wall. You're, no, I agree that that's what I was saying earlier. You're such a good early. comedy partner because you never drop the ball. Ah, we go back and forth. That's why it's funny. It's funny. No, uh, I don't really do punchlines like you. Like you always come up with the punchline. That's the valuable guy. And oh, can you believe that this town's on strike? Is that affecting you? Well, um, you know, I think I've been through one or two. You have too, yeah. right? They're tough. I mean, it's 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 a little press at the beginning, and then I mean, TV. I got thrown out of work this week, and then it gets. Oh, that's right. You I was guys. supposed to do a show Friday, oh, and that's right. Monday was they hadn't taken the vote until the night. I did what I normally do on a Monday, which is put in a very long night, you know, putting together the first draft of my editorial at the end of the show, and and now no show, and uh, I mean, I didn't think about that, yeah, and this, oh. I mean, I don't want to get into the politics of it, but there is no, and look, I know the writers are getting screwed by the streamers, but um, it's always the hard to stop work. It's always hard to stop work because and also the, the money you lose just doing that is crazy. All the people who get thrown out of work. No. Like, and all they the, use it to get rid of people, right? Is not that, that too, but also not just people who get thrown out of work who actually were directly writing but the restaurant that was across the yeah, street of course. from the studio yeah. where the actors went to have lunch. They and, showed that in the news today. They were showing yeah. all the restaurants that are empty and you go, yeah. it's just such a trickle because, I mean, listen, I have no answers. I'm a writer. I'm in the Writers Guild and I, well, I, know. I get it. And, uh, but no, fuck, it's one of those, of, after COVID, you go, I mean, oh. and then The drug dealers who don't get the same order that exactly, they do. Exactly, that's what the, we're getting at. The hookers who would normally go three and four at a time to <laughs> certain... Yeah, the IOUs with the hookers is the embarrassing. That's another thing I think you and I agree on. Like, we would never want to be with a girl except if she really, we, whatever our flaws are, you have to really want to be with us. We can't, like, just buy you. Right. Because that wouldn't feel, you wouldn't feel good about yourself. Right. Because, like, like, anybody could do that. Lovitz could do that. Right. I'm just making. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, John. We love John. Balderdash. I saw Lovitz this weekend. You did? Yeah. I did Las Vegas. He was there, and so we went golfing. That's See, that's like the way people feel about bands. You know, like I feel is the way a lot of people feel about that gang of Saturday Night Live yeah. guys who, like, more than other cast members seem to have, like, this bond that went on like yeah. like more than the music fans don't like to think of their favorite band members hating each yeah. other breaking up i don't yeah, i don't yeah. talk to him it's like please mommy and yeah, daddy why are you fighting I, we I, love I hate you. it and you you guys i think uniquely in the nsnl catalog like have this like band of brothers thing that went on yeah you know I'm i can't lucky. think of any other grouping that does you know, I'm lucky, A, to have some friends from my era and then also the 
Dana, Dennis, Kevin Neal, like that era, Lovitz. I still talk to those guys when I can. You know, I see Dana a lot. But, you know, it just, also there's... You're there's, not all the same era? Well, you we sort of... overlap some. We overlapped a little, and then it yeah. went on to uh, more, I think people think of more mm, with me, you know, Schneider, Sandler, Rock, Tim Meadows, you know, those guys, and uh, Farley. What about that first year with Chevy? When I was there, <laughs> Chevy was fucking good. Chevy did one year and fucking tapped out, and he was right. a huge star. Six four, good looking. I saw yeah. Goldie Hawn. She was nothing like him. Formidable. He came into a meeting. I was like, really? God damn this guy. Yes. Because they did uh, no, two movies. And also, the good looking, but has a sense of humor. Yeah. So can play against type. That's yeah. what Cary Grant was. Yeah. That's what Burt Reynolds was. Yeah. Um, that's what uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds is. Yeah. You know, that's that's the ultimate goal. When you are the good looking guy, but you don't act like You're just doing your thing. Yeah. I mean, that's so attractive to women. Yeah, you're just fucking around. Warren Beatty. Accidentally good looking, yeah. You know. That's not your only thing you have going. And then that's that's those guys. Well, Warren Beatty was always, I always thought was the ultimate because he was great looking, rich, movie star, but also like humble. Mm. Like he had very Midwestern manners. That's so it was always about works. you. Yeah. And also, he, it's <laughs> like in baseball, he was a five tool player. He also <clears throat> was like the most relentless. Like the stories With about girls. Warren Beatty, like he would see a girl driving and he would pull her over. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, shit like that. Yeah. Like just like, I have to get to know you, blah, blah, blah. And of course he's Warren Beatty and right. it probably happened. And, and he's good looking, they, they, they yeah. give him a break. And yeah. he's Warren Beatty, you know, so. No no sevens are pulling guys over, girls over. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yeah, it has to be, uh, you have to like have some Right. It's like the girls that get away with murder, so do great looking guys. They get away with stuff that regular people would. There's a thing that the kids call a uh, pretty privilege. Mm. Heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not directly. <laughs> I've heard whispers. See, yeah. You always hit the ball. <laughs> I, I feel like I would be I, I would love to be a straight man. That is a great job. Uh, I would love to just be that guy. I'm a straight man with Farley. I'm a straight man in a lot of movies. There's movies that really yes, die. That's go, true. I go, I would do this movie because you need a in the wrong Missy, that the movie for Netflix. I was straight I read it knowing I'm not the funny part, and I go, you know what? I sort of like that. Ben a, Stiller, Jason it's Bateman, a like great job. in over your head, straight man. It's like being the assist leader in basketball. It's fucking fun, you know. You and then you, you just know. watch them score. After oh. a while, like it's tough, but you just watch <laughs> them score. But it's funny, like that. Wrong Missy did more. That movie did more for me because uh, you know, I guess it's about uh, have one that works about every ten years. That's what I'm. That's my pattern. It's like it goes Tommy Boy, then it goes Joder, and it goes Growing oh, Up, yeah. then it goes Yeah. Wrong Missy was one of the big ones on Netflix that they just. Call go, it's worldwide, number one again, number one again. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't believe it. They're like, um, we don't believe it. But uh, good job. So just, just trying to hang in there. Very few people have like one hit, let alone. Yeah, it's hard uh, to hang in there. Yeah. You know what it is. You know, you're doing the same thing. It's hard to just keep it going. So uh, um, I think what you're doing is harder because I'm doing the same. I've already got it. Yeah. I've been there 21 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all I got to do is just do the thing that I have been doing, which of course, if you keep doing the same thing, you're gonna get better at it. Yeah. You know, and like you said, like we look, we don't have to look awesome. We just have to look generically late middle age. <laughs> yeah. And not be offensive to look at. Yeah. You know. Um, Cause you see a movie, it's like Will Ferrell is the dad and you don't know his wife or how old they are, but you go, Will Ferrell, and everything how old he is, I just go, no. oh, he's the guy in this movie. Of course. And he's funny. Right. But if you ever go, oh, he's, 59 and he's still, <laughs> yeah. the, you know, you go, it doesn't make sense in the movie, but you go, because no. you don't think of that, that, that's old when you think about it, but when you go, hey. oh, it's Will Ferrell <laughs> and he's the kid's coach, but you go, why would he have a kid? Let me tell you, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. and Sylvester, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, got it. <laughs> made, <laughs> you don't smoke pot. Do you? <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> okay, they made a movie about, oh, I don't know, it was only a few years ago. Okay, yeah. it was a script that plainly was written. Was it them in a prison? <laughs> yeah. I remember that one. It was called like it prison. It was a script that 
plainly was written for two men in their mid thirties. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're hitting each other with pipes, <laughs> chairs. They don't even change it. Yeah, they, and it was just like they were so preposterously too old, both of them, yeah. for this movie. It was like one of them was in prison. Okay, you have to get arrested, get in the prison, yeah. and then break out of this impossible to yeah. break out prison with this guy who hates you. And <laughs> it's written for Robert Pattinson. Right. And then they're like, Arnold exactly. says he wants to do it. And you're like, instead right. of your daughter being four, she's 40. I mean, Norman Lear was not available. <laughs> so they went with, yeah. And it's just like, yeah, but they're stars. Yeah. You know, there's something about. That's not the one where the boots stick to the ground. That's Nicolas Cage. Remember, he's in prison and he's got these electric, these boots that are magnetized to the ground. I'll, no. show, I'll show you a clip. <laughs> I'll send you a link. No. I yeah. mean, but Nick Cage, there's a great example. He's great, too. What? He's great, too, Nick Cage. Yes, and also, I mean, he was just on 60 Minutes. Like, he has, he has, like, wait, waited for the Ferris wheel. Yeah. To, to <laughs> he has some mystery to him, and he comes back and... And now he's at the top of it again, and it just shows, especially in this business. I mean, you were saying, like, every 10 years or whatever, but, like... That's life. We just happen to be in the business of, of show. So for us, it's like this kind of thing. Mm. You know, you not everyone out is going to be a hit. Mm. And it's very hard to predict what is going to work and what's not. Sure. It's a, especially movies. Yeah. Like, I'm so glad I'm not in that game. I, I couldn't take it because so many things can go wrong. You read a movie, and every movie I've tried to do a, I, is funny. From the beginning, there's so many ways to go wrong, like you said. The right. table reads funny, and then it goes wrong from there. It's like, direction is tough. The editing, the, the, uh, this, the co-stars don't get along. Someone's right. like, something about it, the, so the distribution, the poster, the right. release date, it's freezing out. Exactly. I mean, we, we, we had Black Sheep come out, and they go, Larry King was like, there's a storm tonight this weekend. They advise everyone not to leave the house. I'm like, what? <laughs> Don't leave. Shut the fuck up. Like, not just they're snowing. They go, that's good for a movie. It snows. I go, not when they say don't leave the house. The worst right. one we've had in 15 years. And you go, oh, so. Now, uh, for you kids watching, uh, back in the day, as you kids would say, uh, we had to leave the house to see a movie. Yeah, yeah, you had to go out. You had to yeah, they're, they're like, what are you talking about? It's hard to get out and see. It's hard to get people well, out to see was, a movie. Did someone stash your phone outside or something? Why would you need to leave the yeah. house? And, you know, when you watch a movie at home, you can get distracted. The same thing with like, people that work from home. I think there's too much distraction because I've done it. And when I watch a movie, I look at my phone or I go in the other room or... When you're in a theater, you're, it's sort of the only game in town. You, know, you sit in a the theater and you stare. And you watch it. You're more into it, I think. I, I have, I must admit, I have only seen, I think, two movies in the theater in the last five years. And some of that was COVID. Yeah. But, but some of that is just, I got so used to um, not watching movies all at once. I treat a movie like a book. I don't read a whole book in one yeah, sitting. Yeah, that's what I, I'm doing I have too. A, none of them hold my, if it held my attention, yes, I could see. But it's like, yeah, I like this, but for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to watch something else for 20 minutes. The people that shock me are my friends. You know, in fairness, they have no jobs. But they, they, go, <laughs> they go, uh, they have, you know, they, are, they go, I have a commercial audition Thursday. I'm like, this is what it's down to. So they go, you know what I watched last night? Uh, three seasons of Ted Lasso. <laughs> that's a hundred hours and they're like yeah i go what how do you do it they go i blew through a season of uh okay i went and re, re breaking bad I, go, I i know i i couldn't have i do one I'm like this more. is it you know I, as good as it is i don't right. know if i'm a snob but i go these some of these shows right. are good but i go it's not even the show i just the tension span i don't know what it is. i agree I, I don't understand the American attention span. It's either three seconds or, or forever. You know, like like podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like, I would never have guessed that podcasts would be a thing. To me, it's like AM radio, a yeah, lot of it. It really is. Um, and Which wasn't cool for so long. So, so uncool. Um, and also, like, if we only do an hour, it's like, Chintzy. 
You know, like it's weird. I don't know. Like, yeah. Why? What, I, we tried what's to wrong with hour? two hours or three? And I'm like, whoa, who, who, who has this? Who in God's kind of, green earth is sitting there? I, I mean, and, Rogan, they like five hours to three and hours. And to binge anything? Binge? And sometimes, binge? I sir. can't get through an episode. Yeah. I think clips of podcasts, I see that on Instagram. So I see a clip of yeah, Theo Vaughn. Then, I see my friends. I go, Tim Dillon. That's funny. That's funny. But I don't ever watch the whole podcast, but I go, this is the good part. And I judge going, that's funny to me. These guys are funny to me. And I form an opinion, but. Yeah, I, I must say, I kind of hate that we live in this clip yeah. world because people say to me, you know, <laughs> Billy. Corgan. Corgan. <laughs> I knew, said it he was on me. your show recently. Yeah, just this before you got here. We were talking about an interview and he said, yeah, I saw clips. And it's like, I want to go, thank you. And also, fuck you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know like, I heard him say that. It's like, I just want to go, oh, what's a shame. I, But nobody ever seems to want to watch anything in its fullness. Yeah. Or, or, you know, we do certainly have fans who do that. But, like, I feel like we move into this clip-driven world of, like, just give me the, just give me the tastiest tip of the, yeah. you know. Because people say, you know, uh, your movie, I've actually seen pieces of it. I liked it. Right. That's another it's a good Hollywood thing. Saw pieces of it. I, I mean, I've had people who said with a straight face, like they were trying to compliment me on religious and said, I started it. It's like, that's not a compliment, you know? Like, you know, know, SNL has it down. Like, if you follow, even like you on Twitter, it'll show in full one of your, one of your full segments. So it's really the whole show. SNL, here's Weekend Update. Here's someone on Weekend Update. Here's a sketch. Here's the monologue. So if you want, one at a time, you can go back and watch what you want to watch. A lot of things do that. Yours is bigger because it's on like the internet. Like people will pull it on the next day and say, you said this. Right. And you'll click and it'll be the whole monologue. So if you miss it, you see chunks, but you see a fat chunk. You don't just see it a minute of it. Right. It'll go beginning, middle, end. And that's uh, the way I see a lot of stuff because... I mean, they're not there, or I'm out there making millions doing shit, you know? <laughs> but you are. No, not all at once, but no, it adds up. Yeah. Um, You've had a fucking amazing career. No. I mean, not everyone comes off that show. Uh, now, that was a hard move. That's the hard one. That gap right there. Right. Because a lot of people... They said you can do your own show for a network. It was back when it was like just the networks, really. The big three and Fox. I said, we'll right. give you your own show. Right. Alpha of SNL. You get one swing. Right. And I watched, I think it was Arsenio, had all the heat in the world, did his own sitcom and didn't work. Right. And they're like, okay, he's done. What else? And they're like, yeah. Brutal. Is that brutal? Right? One swing. Then they turn, and you think it's going to be forever. So I, that's when I joined Just Shoot Me. They go, or you could be the fifth lead on a show that they might pick up. Mm. And I said, it's farther down the line. It's yeah. past Very smart. pilot stage. It's a pilot I could watch. Right. They didn't have someone kind of like me. Everyone was really good. That's smart. It's from a guy that did Larry Sanders. Right. And, and NBC already likes it. It's almost on the air. Right. And I go, let me jump in here. Perfect. And the same thing that I went over. I and never did, knew uh, that. That's really Rules of engagement. It was a pilot. They were already wanting to pick it up. If you join, we'll pick it up. So I'm already at the one yard line to do a pilot from scratch. Right. You're right. It's too scary. That's the uh, activation energy point, as they would say in chemistry, where we see whether these two compounds combine to make a new compound or fizzle. And that was a very smart move. That's the, that's the key moment there. Yeah. Like you pick the right horse. I see it also, and this sounds crazy, but when you watch football and you see like a great receiver, a great quarterback, and they want more money and they switch teams, and you go, and you never hear from them again, I go, you should just realize there's something that's working with this group. And I can't say what, no one knows what, but that's where you work best. And it's working, it's working. You go somewhere else, something's different, and there's something about it and it falls apart. I, and that's what this kind of like TV shows. If, if you get cocky and say, I want to do my own, and it doesn't work, that mental beating of trying to go back and get your heat back is just too hard. But it's nice that you're... You know, we both got to a point where, <clears throat> first of all, I had so much anxiety when I was young about 
am I going to be a failure or not? Because it's very easy to be a failure. Mm -hmm. You can either be a failure right at the beginning and never get anywhere, mm -hmm. or come off SNL and then just kind of... Yeah, it's hard practice. to get on something if it doesn't work then that's a misstep right. and then it's a little harder and then you so, get the second lead on a pilot and then if that doesn't work then it's really to me that's a lot of my mental calmness is like okay i was not a failure in this life i chose this profession yeah. and was a success and found a nice piece of real estate and same with you you found a nice little piece of real estate Get are, something are, you do and you know, just try to do it. Yeah. Are we Austin Butler? No. Easy. <laughs> but, you know, we weren't dealt that yeah. hand. Right. We made good with the hand we had. Yeah. It's hard, to, it's hard after five years, after 10 years. All right. I'm I know you're wrapping me up. Yeah. Can you bring my car around? <laughs> I, I want to stay a little longer, but my car's coming around. <laughs> I'm sure you will be here at the party I'm going to have for you. Oh, we're going to have what a laugh party? What if it's in your honor? Oh, what I'd have to stay a few party minutes? in your honor? Then you'd have I'd to like come. You, you fucking stay six minutes and do this. Thanks, Bill. Is that the end? Okay.